On April 12th, 1945, 70 nautical miles northwest of Okinawa, destroyer USS Mannert L. Abel drifts immobilized. Smoke billows from her damaged shafts, the result of a recent kamikaze attack by a Mitsubishi A6M-0. As the crew fights to contain fires and repair the damage, nine G4M Betty bombers appear, descending from 20,000 feet. These aircraft carry something far more heinous than conventional bombs. In their open bays rest Yokosuka MXY-7 Oka. The Oka is a pilot's coffin and a ship's nightmare rolled into one. A purpose-built, rocket-powered flying bomb designed for a single, devastating kamikaze strike. As the Bettys approach, Abel's gunners spring into action. But just as the mothership releases its lethal cargo, it becomes clear the ship's remaining guns are no match. The tiny aircraft is moving too fast. Within seconds, the pilot ignites three rocket engines, accelerating to over 600 miles per hour in a power dive. The seemingly unstoppable Oka, a purpose-built human bomb, begins its silent glide toward the stricken destroyer. All the American crew can do is watch in horror as Japan's ultimate weapon brings doom upon them. In 1943, Ensign Mitsuo Ota of the 405th Kokutai, aided by students from the Aeronautical Research Institute at the University of Tokyo, developed the initial design for a unique aircraft, a rocket-propelled ship killer. Ota submitted his groundbreaking plans to the Yokosuka Research Facility, only to face rejection. At the time, Japan was still riding the wave of its early war successes. However, by 1944, the tide of war had turned dramatically against Japan, as the Allies had been racking up decisive victories, one after the next, reclaiming territory and advancing closer to the mainland. In October 1944, as Allied forces steadily dismantled Japan's military strength, Vice Admiral Takajiro Onishi issued a crucial directive. He ordered the creation of special naval units, combining men and aircraft, to launch attacks on American warships, gathering for Philippine beach landings. While the Allies dubbed these units kamikaze, the Japanese chose a different term, toko, meaning special attack. Motivated by the ultimate sacrifice to protect their homeland, countrymen, and emperor, toko pilots demonstrated unwavering allegiance to Bushido, the warrior's code of honor. Though toko pilots flew virtually every type of Japanese military aircraft, early operations exposed the need for a small and swift machine, one that could be constructed with ease and evade anti-aircraft fire. Suddenly, the once discarded notion of a human-guided missile gained the irresistible appeal. With renewed resolve, the Imperial Japanese Navy greenlit the project, and within weeks, the Yokosuka Naval Air Technical Arsenal engineers unveiled their sinister creation. The Yokosuka MXY-7 Oka, or Cherry Blossom, was a diminutive model designed with wood over an aluminum frame to reduce weight and conserve war essential materials. With a rapid development period, the type underwent its first unpowered flight test in October 1944, followed by a powered flight in November. At the time, the Oka was seen as an inexpensive and easy-to-produce aircraft to strike back at the growing number of amassing allies. Most importantly, a purpose-built human kamikaze concept provided a simple solution to a major issue plaguing the missiles of the era, a reliable guidance system. For this, the model's simplistic wing structure and T-style tail assembly offered basic pilot control, complete with rudimentary controls. Only one or two training flights were required, just enough for the brief and final mission. The Cherry Blossom's mission was straightforward. This single-seat aircraft carried a 2,600-pound warhead on the nose, powered by three Type 4 Model 1 Mark 20 solid-fuel rocket engines. However, due to its very short range of about 23 miles, a conventional aircraft was required to carry the tiny Oka to the target area and then release the piloted bomb. While many were proposed, only one could become the chosen mothership, the Mitsubishi G4M Betty twin-engine bomber. During the beginning stages of its mission, the Oka was typically carried partially recessed in the Betty's bomb bay, 
with the pilot traveling inside the mothership until they neared the target area. However, if the target was close to the base, the pilot would have no choice but to be bolted into the cockpit before takeoff. Upon release from the carrier aircraft, launched from altitudes of sometimes well over 25,000 feet, the Oka would glide towards its target with a small oxygen supply, allowing the pilot to be awake and razor sharp. As it closed in, the pilot would then ignite the craft's three solid fuel rockets, either individually or all at once. With these powerful projectiles engaged, the operator would steer the missile toward the intended ship, making every effort to ensure a successful strike. That's when the model's strongest feature showed off, its speed. Reaching more than 600 miles per hour in a power dive, this incredible velocity made the Oka challenging for defenders to accurately target and destroy the incoming missile before it could reach its mark. As the United States' invasion of the Philippines unfolded, the Japanese were eager to deploy their new rocket bombs. But before this tiny, terrifying machine could wreak havoc on Allied vessels, the MXY-7 would have to make a journey of well over 1,000 miles to reach the ocean front lines. Achieving this would prove surprisingly difficult. On November 28, 1944, the iconic Japanese supercarrier Shinano embarked on her shakedown cruise with an alternate objective, to deliver 50 Okas to the Philippines' effort. However, on the 29th, in the early hours, Commander Joseph F. Enright of the nearby submarine USS Archerfish spotted the massive ship and launched an attack. Firing a spread of six torpedoes, four of which struck Shinano on her starboard side, the submarine caused catastrophic damage. Despite efforts by Shinano's inexperienced crew to save their ship, the situation became untenable, and within hours, the carrier sank to the bottom of the ocean, taking more than 1,400 of her crew and all the Okas with her to a watery grave. Strategic setbacks continued on December 19th, when another 30 cherry blossoms were lost en route to Manila aboard the carrier Unryu, which fell victim to torpedoes from USS Redfish. Even the first mission involving an Oka proved unsuccessful on March 21st, 1945, when the G4M Bettys carrying them were intercepted by American fighters, causing the Okas to be released too far from the target and fall harmlessly into the sea. The new aircraft finally got a chance to prove itself in combat, when on April 1st, six Betty bombers launched an assault on the American fleet operating off Okinawa. During this raid, at least one Oka made a significant impact, striking one of the 16-inch turrets on the battleship West Virginia, causing moderate damage. That same day, transports Alpine, Akernar, and Terrell also fell victim to kamikaze aircraft, though it remains unclear if these were cherry blossoms or another vehicle. However, analysis from West Virginia suggested that there were no direct hits, only a near miss. Actual records of the Oka's performance and stats would remain quite difficult to obtain, especially given the fact that no pilots returned from their fateful missions aboard their rocket-powered, human-guided kamikaze attack aircraft. Nonetheless, recognizing the imminent threat posed by the Oka, the United States military scrambled to extend their defensive perimeters, desperately trying to intercept the G4M Oka combinations before they could strike. Despite their valiant efforts and heightened defenses, the Oka often found its mark, once with spectacularly devastating results. On April 12, 1945, at Radar Picket Station 14 off Okinawa, American destroyer USS Mannert L. Abel was performing radar picket duty when the ship suffered a fierce kamikaze attack. Within minutes, well over 20 aircraft of all types surrounded her, staying just outside her gun range for over half an hour and buzzing menacingly. Moments later, a group of Mitsubishi A6M0 closed in to attack, with one damaging both of her shafts. Just as the crew overcame the initial shock, nine G4M Betty bombers approached, carrying Okas in order to challenge the U.S. fleet. Spotted at 20,000 feet, eight were shot down before their piloted flying bombs could deploy. But one remained. With this, a single Oka was released from 20,000 feet, gliding at first, then accelerating as it neared wave-top level. 
One minute from impact, the pilot ignited the third rocket, steering toward the able starboard quarter at around 500 miles per hour. On fire and immobilized, the crew aboard the stricken destroyer saw the approaching Oka, describing it as a flying torpedo. With no time to lose, and despite damage rendering the five-inch gun mounts inoperable, operators quickly opened fire with the smaller 20mm and 40mm weapons. As he closed in, the Oka pilot aimed using a simple crosshair sight, and despite the chaos and tension, the Oka struck the destroyer amidships. The crash caused an enormous explosion on the already beleaguered ship that tore the vessel right in half. Within just three minutes of the Oka attack, Abel sank, taking 79 American sailors and the Japanese pilot with her. The devastation didn't end there. Nearby, anti-aircraft fire from the destroyer USS Jeffers exploded in Oka less than 50 yards from the ship, the resulting blast causing severe damage and forcing Jeffers to withdraw from action. Meanwhile, another destroyer, USS Stanley, was hit by a cherry blossom whose warhead passed through the thinly armored ship and exploded underwater nearby. Misfortune struck again when a second Oka attacked Stanley, missing by mere feet as the rocket-propelled bomb's stubby wing clipped off the ship's ensign. As the final months of the war unfolded, radar picket destroyers like Abel bore the brunt of Oka attacks, responsible for relaying enemy aerial movements to the main fleet as an early warning system. Ships like USS Gaiety and USS Hugh W. Hadley sustained damage nearly beyond repair. One of the last successful Oka strikes occurred on May 4, 1945, when USS Shea, on picket duty about 75 miles from Okinawa, received a warning of a probable attack. Despite being at battle stations with full steam power, Shea's crew was still caught off guard because of the Oka's sheer speed. The cherry blossom appeared so swiftly that gunners had no chance to intercept it, with only five seconds between sighting and impact. This success also stemmed from clever Japanese tactics, where enemy planes circled overhead, drawing the ship's fire, while the fast Oka streaked in under cover of mist before ships like Shea could adjust their targets. The explosion of the Oka scattered metal all across the superstructure. Parts of the Oka's wing and tail, which sheared right off as the jet-propelled bomb tunneled through the ship, were recovered topside. The impact gouged a hole four feet by five feet where it entered, smashing equipment, severing cables, and ripping open everything along its path. Prompt action by damage control parties quickly brought the resulting port list under control, preventing further damage and ensuring the ship's safety. After this close call and a long repair period, Shea moved on to other operations. By then, however, the writing was on the wall for the Empire. Oka attacks and attempts persisted along the Okinawa-bound fleet until late June. As these last few months of the war continued to evolve, Betty bombers proved particularly vulnerable to United States Navy combat air patrol fighters, especially the iconic Grumman F-6F Hellcat and the bought F-4U Corsair. Without escort, these Oka-carrying groups became easy targets, once detected by radar. Often, none of the motherships even made it back to base. In practice, the model failed to deliver the expected psychological or logistical impact, never truly posing a significant threat to the fleet. Okas proved as dangerous as other kamikaze weapons only when they hit their targets accurately, which didn't happen often. Historians estimate that out of more than 800 models built, barely 60 Okas saw actual combat. Only one ship was sunk, two were damaged beyond repair, and three others were damaged just seven ships in total. No capital ships suffered severe damage, let alone destruction. These low statistics aren't that surprising, given the offensive capabilities of the United States Navy at the time. And while Oka is Japanese for cherry blossom, the United States Navy had its own nickname that encapsulated their overall thoughts on the aircraft. Baka, Japanese for fool. During its production period, Seven other Oka variants were built and tested for launch from caves, submarines, or towed by bombers, 
but none came to fruition. By the time the model was introduced, Japan's defeat was already looming. In the end, not even a human-guided power bomb could alter the course of the war. The Oka, despite its fearsome concept, became just another failed weapon in Japan's desperate arsenal.